What's up cutie, Stella Chung here, and today I'm gonna try something a little bit new. Welcome to Stella's Third Party Report, the weekend show wrapping up the biggest gaming and esports news of the week. There's so much that happens in gaming and esports now that it's really hard to keep up with everything, so I mean, while you're lounging and relaxing on your Saturday afternoon, why not get a little recap of the week? Also, I've been neglecting my YouTube, so this is an effort to try and revamp it while also trying something new. So here's this week's Third Party Report. May 12th, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom released and we saw the review scores pour in and surprise, surprise, it's tens all across the board. Well, almost. Tears of the Kingdom on Metacritic is currently at 96. This matches the score for Elden Ring from February 25th, 2022 on the Xbox Series and PlayStation 5. Here are some of the review scores. But let's get real, I have no idea how Tears of the Kingdom got so many tens when you can't even pet the dog. That is a two out of 10 for me. I'm just kidding, but also like, come on, Nintendo, you're not giving us a new console for tears and it's a $70 game and we can't pet the dog. Something is not adding up. Fortnite just announced a ranked mode coming to its game through a Twitter video May 12th that said, a new way to grab the victory rail is coming. Will you rise through the ranks? The video went through several tiers of ranks showcasing their icons. It's honestly really surprising that Fortnite hasn't had a ranked mode to its battle royale yet. There was the arenas mode, but that was more of a challenge than a proper ranked mode. Between Fortnite getting a new ranked mode and Call of Duty Warzone 2 also getting a ranked mode, I'm really excited to try and put my time into a different competitive game other than Apex. Ranked always gives me a little bit more of a push to play the game. And honestly, I don't like playing casual games because I feel like, oh, what's the point? And you know, ranked kind of gives me that good feedback on how well I'm doing. Ranked pushes me to try and get better. Recently, I haven't really been feeling Apex as much, so it'll be nice to switch between Fortnite and Warzone. Speaking of Apex, Apex Legends Season 17 dropped and it had some changes to its ranked system that a lot of people are skeptical about. Yeah, it's only the first week, but so far a pro player just hit Predator, the highest rank in the game, without doing any damage. The previous rank system involved paying a higher amount of rank points to enter a match. So the higher your rank, the more entry points you have to use in order to play. Now with season 17, there's a set fee of 35 LP or ladder points for all ranks. Since the fee never changes even at higher tiers, you can just survive in matches and climb the ladder. You break even at 9th to 10th place, and the higher you place from there, you increase your LP by 15 points. NRG's Sweet Dreams made the climb to Predator in 50 games in about 18 hours. His whole stream is available to watch where he did this insane challenge. Of course, even though he didn't do any damage, he still led his teammates. He gave them advice on what they could do to survive and last the longest. Sweet solo queued into ranked matches and ended up leading his teammates and winning five of his 50 games played. So his teammates could still get kills and he would get the lowest team participation LP, but that would still add up as they survived long enough to reach placements that would reward them even more points. Each ranked tier is only a thousand LP and Sweet kept placing in third or second place, which gained him at least 150 LP per game. I don't think any normal player could do this because he still had to lead his team and use high tier movement tactics to escape and survive longer. But the fact that just a more skilled player could even reach Predator by hiding and not fighting is kind of incredible. The entry fee was a huge topic of debate when Apex Season 17 launched, and the large consensus is that the entry cost is far too small for all the tiers of ranks available. Season 17 is clearly trying to reward placement more since it is a battle royale, but this doesn't feel like the right way to do it. Again, this is just the first week of Season 17, so it's possible we may see an update to this rank system, but for now, we'll just have to wait and see if Respawn is going to address it. Okay, we're gonna go back to Nintendo for just a little bit. Nintendo held an investor presentation and revealed their latest earnings report. During this, Shintaro Furukawa, Nintendo president, stated that there are no plans to reduce the price of their hardware during this fiscal year. So that wouldn't be until about April 2024 at the earliest. Furukawa also went on to explain that the prices of some production materials had actually gone down, but it would take some time before the actual pricing for consumers would reflect that. This is the second year that the Switch sales have been in decline, which is interesting because Tears of the Kingdom is the first $70 first party Nintendo game to release. But Furukawa said that Nintendo wasn't considering new hardware like next-gen consoles until the end of the fiscal year in April 2024. I don't think the decline in sales numbers really worry Nintendo since they had such a success with Tears of the Kingdom's launch. I don't think I've seen such a big turnout for in-person midnight releases since like 2015. It was so heartwarming to see so many people so excited and it brought back so many memories. 
Okay, so time for a little bit of weird news. Call of Duty just added Nick Merckx and Tim the Tatman, the FPS-focused streamers, as operators in the game. Oh, and Kevin Durant. Yes, the basketball player for the Phoenix Suns. Kevin Durant's Operator Bundle is available to purchase in-game now, but the Nick Merckx and Tim the Tatman skins won't be available till the 31st. As weird as this looks, it's pretty cool to see such prominent Call of Duty players get immortalized in the game. Well, okay, immortalized until Warzone 3 arrives and we get skin wipes again. But it's still pretty cool that some players can now play as their favorite streamer. I never expected Call of Duty to go the Fortnite route, but here we are. Oh, also, there's this terrifying operator pack. So yeah, have fun sleeping. Well, that's it for your third party report. I hope you all have a fantastic week. And if you like this episode, maybe I'll see you again next weekend. See you later.